I'm going to turn these into mugs because, good golly, they turned out so good. Like, probably one of my favorite things out of this kiln. Hey friends, so welcome to another episode of Clay and Chat. So uh, in this episode, I'm going to be going over the glaze kiln results. So I didn't have time to unload the kiln and film and all that stuff. I'm trying to do a restock before the Christmas shipping deadline. So I've been kind of hustling to get that done. So I didn't have time, but I still wanted to show you guys the results and the different glazes that I used and my opinion on them because I did do some new things as I always do. Lord forbid I test anything. I'm just going to throw it on a mug and hope that it comes out good. So good news is that it did come out this good. So we are good to go. So first I just want to say hello. Welcome to my channel. I am Erica Rose. I do pottery. I'm a stay at home mom of three girls and I homeschool them. So when they're during their quiet time, nap time, I'm able to get a couple hours in to do pottery. Before we get into clay, I just wanted to show you guys this. I know it's not clay, but I'm very proud of it. I finished it over the weekend. It took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I was just going to share with you guys one of my crochet projects right now. This is a shawl that I made for a friend. Um, you know, I, I started it and I was like, oh, that's going to be so fast. I'll get that done in no time for Christmas and it'll be so good. Um, it'll be a quick, quick go up, but it, it, it wasn't. It took a lot longer than I thought. So when I was finally done with it, I was like, thank goodness, because I have like three or four other things that I want to make before Christmas. So that being said, so this is a shawl and it's done in Tunisian crochet. So as you can see, very pretty. I love this. This is a, a pattern by TLY or TL Yarn Crafts. So I think her name's Tony. So yeah, she does really amazing Tunisian crochet patterns. I did end up changing mine a little bit, but um, it's still basically the same concept. I haven't blocked it yet, but yeah, really pretty. It's a lot bigger, like it's, I can't even fit it all on camera. It's huge. So that was amazing. I'm really glad that that's done. So I know it's not clay related, but I was, I was too proud. I had to show it off. I was very proud. And then other things I've made, um, this little hat, look how cute that is by the same designer, TL Yarn Crafts. So, and then that, there's a matching scarf, but okay, enough of that. I know you guys aren't here for my crochet projects, but uh, I like to share anyways, because like I said, I'm proud of them. They took a while and they turned out really good. Anyways, let's get into what you're here for. The kiln load went great. Everything came out amazing. I don't think I had any issues really, which is rare, but you know, sometimes it happens and it's a blessing and we take it. So we'll start with this one. So this is a new design that I'm really excited about. And I was really excited about it. I was like, man, I hope it comes out okay because it's something that took a lot more time than my normal designs. So I was excited to see how it turned out. So it came out really good. So this is a cabin mug that I added some 3D sculpting to. And so you can see that if it will focus. And so, yeah, I, I pushed in this circle area here where it's sitting. I pushed it in on the mug and you can kind of see that bump in there. So I pushed it in and then I sculpted this tree and the cabin and then this other tree and I added those on and then I added a little bit of a shelf here to add the grass detail and everything. So, and then I just glazed it underglaze with speedball underglaze and then a clear glaze on top. My, um, not mine, but Amico... HF Sahara clear glaze, best clear glaze ever. And so it turned out really good. And then the outside glaze is um, Amico's Iron Luster and then oatmeal, Amico's oatmeal on top. And then it's got a really cool wood grain look to it. So yeah, it turned out really good. I made another one that is a little tent scene that turned out really good too. Uh, did I bring that in? Same concept, but with a tent. So yeah, it turned out really good. Really happy about how those turned out. And they feel great. These are hand built. So they've got a really good weight to them. Really good size. Just, you know, all around great mug. So uh, really happy with how those turned out. And then I also tried, so I've been doing hand built mugs with not the texture all the way up to the lip. I've been doing kind of like a curve sort of thing so that it kind of it gives it movement, I guess. I don't know. It just design wise, I think it looks really good. So for a couple of them, I added a medallion 
and the texture and that I was able to glaze is this B one. So if you can look, you can kind of see how it's like a wave, right? So it's not completely just straight across the lip, it's a wave. And then that's the texture and then there's no texture up here. And then I did uh, Mako's Cenote all on it, all over. And then I did the Dark Flux on top of that, just on the part where it starts to wave. And then the B, that's the medallion. I just used a cookie cutter to cut, cut out a slab. And then I put my design on, this is Mishima, and then I used some Speedball uh, underglaze for the coloring, and then that Amico clear again on top. So again, another hand-built mug, but it just it turns out so good. It's so nice. That's one thing I love about hand-built mugs is since you're rolling out your slab for the bottom and for the inside or the body of the mug, it all feels really uniform. So it's not like, oh man, I didn't trim away enough when I was trimming this mug and so now it's really heavy. So um, a big plus to hand building mugs. I really like that. And same concept with this one and same glazes and everything. It's the Cenote with the dark flex on top. And then this one said, it says just one more row, you know, for knitters and crocheters, you all know it's always just one more row before you go and do the next thing. So, uh, and this has like the knit texture on it. And this is from Marvelous Molds. Jess at Clayshare, she actually is the one that um, brought this to my attention. So great texture, really great texture for knitting. And then, yeah, and then again, Mishima, my design, just this was just a cookie cutter that I cut out and then added my own design. So yeah, it's really great shape, great feel. Feels great, looks great, love it. Oh, and then I tried some new stuff this time. Um, I was playing around with transfers. I don't use transfers a ton. I, I prefer to use my own drawings or whatever you call them, but I decided just to play well, around with some transfers because I know that Christmas is coming and I almost never have time to do Christmas designs because I just can't time it out right. I don't know what my problem is, but this year I did. So I used some, these, uh, some sand bow transfers. So this is a sand bow transfer. It's like their Christmas one's got little bells and little candy canes. And I colored these in with speedball underglaze like that. And then it's got this, I don't know if it's a reindeer caribou or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you guys know and you can let me know, but, uh, that is from Ceramica transfers. And I just, again, painted it in with the speedball underglaze just to add that color and then the glaze on top is amico seaweed with oatmeal so really pretty glaze that one is always a win oh and then on the inside of all of these is just that sahara clear from amico uh, i decided to do that this time usually i do clay scapes cream on the inside but i swear every time i do it i end up dripping onto the image and I paint all of my color, like all the underglazes on after bisque, so it's not set. So I have to wipe it off and therefore I end up wiping off some of the color. I don't know. I'm just not as talented as some of the other potters who can just like really quickly get the glaze inside and not on the outside. I'm a mess. So I decided I'll do clear glaze on the inside. And then if it drips, it doesn't matter because I'm going to clear glaze it anyways. So it worked out really well. Had no issues this time. Oh, this one's a good one too. Again, transfers. And it's the Ceramica transfer and then the sand bow transfer on the outside. And there's little peaks of color. You can't see it really clear, but they are there. So yeah, that turned out really cute. And then this is Indigo Float from Amico. And I did Mako Dark Flex, I believe. It looks like Dark Flex to me. Let's see. Oh, this was a new one I tried. So this is a Scraffito Harry Potter mug. So, and I do have a Scraffito, like my top three tools for Scraffito video coming up. So hopefully soon. I just need to edit it and do all that business, but soon. Uh, so anyways, this is Mako Speckled Plum on the top. And then it is Dark Flux on top of that. So really nice. I liked how that turned out. The dark flux worked really good too. Yeah, so that was another win. Oh, here's that glaze combo again, but I think I put it on a little bit thicker on this one. And so it's got some really nice movement at that top part. So yeah, that 
that looks really good. That was one of my favorite combos of this batch. So really nice. Oh, so this one is, this one is okay. It doesn't have as much like movement I want. And it's my own fault. It was a solid on glaze. I should have known it was going to be super translucent, obviously. So uh, Amico iron. And then I put, um, what was it? Was it dark flux? I think it was either dark flux or light flux on it. I can't remember one of the two, but it turned out okay. It's kind of like meh, you know, it's nothing I'm going to write home about, but uh, it looks really good on the mug still. The mug looks great. Nice little X-File mug, I want to believe. And then on the back, you've got Sasquatch just doing his thing. So all in all, it was good. Yeah, maybe not. It's probably nothing I'll do again. I think I like that glaze with the clay scrapes clay scapes cream on it better. So I'll stick to that one next time. So this guy turned out really cute. Uh, a little hobbit hole and then seaweed with oatmeal on top again and then speedball glaze all the way around. Turned out awesome. I love this new shape. I'm trying this shape and uh, it feels really good. It feels good to hold. So that's a nice one. We just had a couple of Lord of the Ring mugs. Fellowship walking around, seaweed with oatmeal again, so that was a good one. And then another hand-built textured mug with, we got Sasquatch on the medallion this time, and then a nice wood grain all the way around, and that's the Amico Iron Luster with the oatmeal again on top. Really great combo, so that looks really good. We had made some ornaments. so. I made just a couple of each. I didn't make a ton this year because I just, I didn't have time. We've got so many fun ornaments. So I made a couple Hobbit hole ornaments. So I guess I only need to show you one. It's really cute. And then I just put a little bit of texture on the back. It's just like a Christmas texture that I had. That way if it's on the tree and it flips around, at least it looks like it's something. Uh, so that one was really good. And then I made a couple cabins as well. And I did red as the color. So those turned out really good too, really cute. And the red ribbon really, really adds to that, really makes it pop. So yeah, those turned out great. And one tip that I noticed uh, when I was making what was it? Oh, when I was making these ornaments, so this was a cookie cutter. And if you guys watched my how to make these, so this is all glazed and finished now. It turned out really cute. My daughter and my husband actually helped me glaze them because I was just, I was running out of time and I needed help. So again, speedball under glazes and then just that Amico clear on top. So um, one thing I did notice when you're using a cookie cutter, this one, I didn't put plastic over the slab and then you know, push down through the plastic. And so it's got a very straight edge, if you can see. But with these ones, I did use plastic and you can tell it's kind of, it's a rounded edge. So I think it just looks a little more polished and a little more professional, I guess. But, um, so that's something if you guys are looking for that. And then I also made these, which I'm going to turn these into mugs because good golly, they turned out so good. Like probably one of my favorite things out of this kiln. So they are Luna Love Goods glasses, but instead of like the black that I usually do, where did that mug go? Okay, like this one. So this is my other Harry Potter Scrofita mug. And so you, there's the glasses again. So this is just black underlays, but this one I did kind of an ombre. So it's got the pink and then that purple and then the light, like light frost blue. Can I get you to focus? Come on. There we go. So yeah, that's like the light frost blue. Again, all speed, speed ball under glazes. And then, yeah, I just carved through that as the Scrapito. So really liked how the ombre looked. So I think that will be so cool on a mug. Excited about that. And then let's see, last but not least, I just did a cute little, just one more row, just one more row ornament. So yeah, again, really happy with everything. It was a great kill mode. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to film it for you guys. Like I said, it's just been crazy busy. I have a restock tonight that I need to finish up and, um, and then I'm going to take some time off and get some 
gifts done that I need to finish and everything. So I'm in the process of knitting a hat that I need to get done. And then I've got like, I think three pairs of socks. I don't know. Can I do this before Christmas? Probably not, but we're going to try anyways. So that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed this kiln unloading. If I had to pick a favorite, I would definitely pick this guy, the sweet little cabin. I, I, this is the first time I was, I have done sculpting on a mug and it just, between like the sculpting and then the texture, it just beautiful. Absolutely love it. Definitely my favorite. This will be a sad one to give away or to sell. I guess I'm not giving it, I'm selling it, but, um, that's definitely my favorite. So let me know what you guys liked and which one was your favorite. And I hope you guys are all doing well and that your family's healthy and that you guys are enjoying the festivities that are coming. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.